can always find some beauty sometimes. That might not be feeling good right now, but boy, is that beautiful. The fountain and the yellow flowers. Uh, you can always find some beauty sometime, somewhere. You just gotta open your eyes and see it. Just look at my cute little boy. <laughs> He's never far from his mama. There's his favourite blankie behind him, he's got his head on it. But he's never too far from his mum. Just look at that cuteness. If I'm looking a bit feverish, yeah, it's kind of like I am. Um, this is um, the leaves from the um, the um, the um. Oh heck, what was it? I I. I took cuttings off a couple of days ago. The citronella plant, the mosquito plant. Um, put it in distilled with them in distilled water and kind of smushed them down a bit. And um, let me tell you, you can already smell it. So this obviously is a concentrated amount. And I will be adding some more water to that. And this one I decided to try it and I squished it in with mineral oil. I'll be adding some more mineral oil and trying to make a an oil that you can put on your skin. Um, hair, anywhere to keep the mosquitoes away, your ankles, you know, the Anywhere that gives off sweat, basically, to help permute the mosquito plant up. The water's boiling. Yeah, another part of getting back on track is um, getting back on track with my diet. And, uh, one of my favourites was always to have quinoa on hand. So <coughs> I 
yeah. Today you didn't find me in a very nice predicament. It's morning actually. I found me on my knees at the side of my bed. Kind of laying over my bed because sometimes that helps when you're having trouble breathing is to actually you know if you can kneel on the side of your bed and lay over your bed. That does help. Um, if you can bring a table up to you or sit at a table and, you know, lean on it. If you need to put a pillow on it, put a pillow on it to raise your arms up. Something to help open up the, the diaphragm. Help relieve the, you know, it doing the work of, you know, your, your spine and all those muscles help relieve those of actually ho holding you up or, you know, put your arms, relax, lay flat, relax so that your diaphragm can actually do the work and the muscles can go into helping with your breath a bit more easily. to stay out of the ICU and back on steroids and antibiotics. I really am determined to break my record and not end up in the ICU in June. to go, he had a meeting to go to, he wasn't going to go, but I told him to go and make sure that his cell phone was fully charged and on at all times, because he knows when he's at these meetings that, um, regional meetings, that I won't you know, I don't bother him on the cell phone unless it's, it's urgent when he's at these regional meetings. Uh, and uh, it's important for a caregiver to be able to feel free to go and have a life outside of caring for a, a sick person. And, uh, that's one thing I will never stop him from having. I will never stop him from spending time with his kids or his grandchildren um, just because I'm having a bad time or as people with germs. <laughs> now where, how, when, what caused this? I don't know. Um, right now, this uh, flare of exasperation. I'm not going to call it an exasperation. I'm not. Not going to give it that name. I'm just going to call it a going to call it a flare up instead of my two treatments that I take on a morning and a night. So in addition to those morning and night treatments, 
which are two of the different medications I'm taking also the, the rescue treatment oh, oh that stop moaning okay And Annie is not too far behind me. She's actually sitting above the steps in the hallway right now. I think. to have some mushrooms and have we got well six tomatoes so I think I'm going for light and easy you know that's my motto I'm going to go uh, quinoa mushroom and tomato sounds just fine and I'm going to spice it up as usual with turmeric because that is good for inflammation, digestion along with yeah, the usual coriander and cumin. I do change it up every once in a while. Right now, <laughs> I can't think too much. Um, well, at least, oh, I want to get the glass bowl out. Now, last time I was trying to start a series of back on track uh, which was in April because April was my birthday um, I, I ended up starting to complicate matters because I was wanting to do a separate section called what did I eat today I think I might do that and I might, you know, follow that trend and I just might put in clips of what I had to eat on specific days. Um, that way, if people want to, I think I just might call it, what did I eat today, you know? And I think what I shall do is I shall just add clips from the videos, my vlogs, of that day, of a particular day. Oh, you know what I'm trying to say. You know what's really funny? Well, it's not funny, it's, it's kind of... I find it funny. Every time I meet a new doctor and they listen to my lungs, they're always amazed at how little airflow I have throughout my lungs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yep. And that, that's why, you know, I'm needing the double lung transplant because there's 18% lung function. Uh, now I first thought when I'd gone from 16% lung function to 18% lung function, I thought that I had gained 2% of my lungs back. But no. That's not what that means. That's 
not what that meant. That just meant that I could blow. <laughs> Two percent more than I could before. And that apparently is, is found with the use of the trilogy. So yay for the trilogy. And as soon as I get over all this, you bet your bottom dollar I'll be back on the stand up chew. Maybe if I had a pair of glasses where I could look down and So, um, yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar I'll be back on the, uh, on the gazelle with my trilogy, exercising my lungs. Um, I'm a little miffed right now because I'm having to put back a surgery that I very much need but can't have while well, my lungs are behaving like this and we put off the surgery during the winter because um, it's for a rectal prolapse and you can google that yourself um, the reason why my pulmonologist didn't, didn't recommend me having it, he, yes, he's cleared me for the surgery, so, yay. Um, that'll make things a, a, a tad more comfortable, actually, a lot more comfortable, and a, and a lot less embarrassment. These things happen. They say it's not something that's hereditary, but the funny thing is, my grandfather, my mum's dad, had the same problem. My mum had the same problems. to wait until my nose is cleared up and the, the poor surgeon is already a bit <laughs> concerned <laughs> when I walked into his office it's been a few years since I saw him and when I walked into his office and showed him I took photos. Sometimes it helps in certain things to take photos to show your doctor, your specialist. Um, anyway, um, what was I going to say? Considering I'm the only one that's gonna like, eat that, yeah, I licked it. Um, um, anyway, because of all the flu that was, oh yeah, the surgeon, and I took it with me, my latest breathing, my latest lung function step. Complete lung function step. Well, I felt bad for that poor man because he looked like he could crawl underneath the table and go running high. Huh. He was like, I don't think. And I said, but Dr. Nelson said, 
thought so. I talked it over with Dr. Nelson. And uh, he thinks, knowing me as he does, yeah. Now, will they have to? Well, I won't go into all that because that'll be another vlog for another day when that all comes about. But, um, yeah. So I don't know if I said that I had an emergency appointment with the doctor t today. Um, and it's always amazing. Oh, yeah, I think I've said that already. Now, seeing as how we're stood here talking as I'm, I'm cooking, one of the things that I do want to touch on um, is know your signs. And this is something that I always kind of glazed over. I didn't kind of, you know, take notice of them um, and, and until I was in a, a terrible state. You know, it's always good. Oh, it'll go away. Oh, it'll go away. Oh, it'll go away. Well, at some point it doesn't go away. And uh, there, there comes a point where you have to be a responsible patient. And knowing your signs is one of them. Now, we all know that breathing for me on a daily basis is not an easy task. You know, I have to use certain um, muscles and certain areas, like also my shoulders, my neck, um, the carotid arteries at times. Um, I use just about everything available to breathe with because all I'm left with is the lower lobes of my lungs which I mean the bottom lower lobes of my lungs um, and if I don't make a conscious effort to make my diaphragm work then my oxygen even with um, with, with, with O2 my with oxygen my O2 levels will go if I don't consciously make an effort to breathe deeply. But sometimes those signs can be a little sneaky. Uh, I was beginning to notice when I was using my tanks I really wasn't using much oxygen. And I really wasn't, didn't, then, then when I really had started to take notice, I wasn't, I couldn't hear the <laughs> So I realized that I wasn't taking a deep enough breath for it to pulse a breath. Um, now I could use it on continuous flow like I do with the home oxygen but that's the only setting I have on the home oxygen is continuous flow but if I I could use the tanks on continuous flow but I would blow through a lot of tanks and the cost would be a lot of money and I feel that it would and, and yes, the air conditions. And I feel that it would um, be detrimental to my being conscious of taking the breath, making my diaphragm work. But even with continuous flow oxygen, when I have something that's starting to come on, It's more of an effort to breathe. It really is more of an effort to breathe. And sometimes it's just easier. Well, actually, I'm not saying it's easier. You just don't realize 
that you're not making the conscious effort to really breathe. The other thing was I started with a slight sore throat a couple of days ago. Uh, I was forgetting things easier. Uh, simple things I was forgetting. I was getting tired easier. And then yesterday I had a started with a slight cough. Now that should have been my first signal to call the doctor. Oh no! I waited until I was on my knees this morning coughing at the side of my bed. So learn your signs of when things are starting to go downhill and that's when you take action. Make sure you have doctor's numbers handy um, in case somebody else has to call for a doctor for you. Sometimes you can talk with your pulmonologist or your doctor. You can have an emergency prescription for the medication that you need to get you through this. If you're finding it's harder to breathe and you're working harder to breathe, start using your rescue inhaler or in my case, like in my case a nebulizer, I don't have enough to use an inhaler and there is a little device, it has a little meter on it, has a little pole and you stick your mouth on the pole and you as hard as you can and that meter will tell the specialist or the doctor you should know this and this is what makes me angry where there are countries now that are not allowing the use of a nebulizer Be now okay I'm not going to go there but that's my next video or a video to away however down the road but that's my next thing that I'm going on Noel thank you so much honey for your constant reminders of the weather, the pollen, it truly is greatly appreciated and I appreciate every single one of you for having my back, for supporting me, for being there for me, for lifting me up when I don't feel so lifted. Um, you all carry me through, you are all a huge inspiration to me. And I appreciate every single one of you very, very much. And I, I really do love you all. Well, I guess I'm after all that. I'm going to finish my dinner. Sorry, I'm showing you my pan's bottom. It's a nice bottom, that's for sure. And I'm just going to use the same pan because I'm the only one that's going to eat this. And to be honest with you, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Babysitter, my Annie, you're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Well, I, uh, I highly recommend one of these mini hospital beds for anyone that has breathing problems um, because you can raise it up. 
quite a bit. As you can see, you can raise these, the head of these birds up. In fact, to a sitting position, if you need to. But if you have any kind of breathing problems, it's absolutely wonderful to have. Um, the feet, well actually they say the knees, it's just the knees that raise up, but when you raise it up so high, the foot of the bed comes up like this. So, well, kind of like this. But when you're as short as I am, yeah, because your feet are on the apex, so your, your feet do raise above. Uh. <coughs> 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 oh. <coughs> when Abby comes home, I'll be doing my vest treatment. I think I might have said that earlier anyway, I mean, he's on his way home. Um, don't fuss with your hair, June, it's not important. No, it's not. Uh, don't you just love those people that have perfect hair? Anyway, um... I think Annie wants to say hi a bit more. Which is unusual for her to be want to be on camera. Well, actually, she doesn't. She just wants me to stroke her head. Uh, stop waffling, okay? Hubby's on his way home. I'll be doing a breathing treatment soon and a, a vest. Be kind, be thoughtful, and considerate to those around you and those you come in contact with, no matter how you come in contact with them. Remember, pain and suffering is pain and suffering, no matter the type. No matter the type. Just because somebody is quick to laugh, make a joke, dance about, water some plants. doesn't mean to say they're not in pain. When you look at someone, look them in the eye. Make sure you can say, I see you. I mean it. Because one day that person you're looking at just might be you. And you might not like it. One step at a time. One breath at a time. We, I, can do this. Keep saying that to yourself. And one day you'll get there, I promise. We'll get there. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening. Both from me. Yeah.